Hi everyone. So I believe you are still with me. Now we are in the second part of module 7, input. Alright, now let's start. Okay, so this will be our slide. So as I said before, please use earphones, earbud for better audio. So these are the objectives uh, for part 2 of input. So I want to discuss on motion input, voice input and video input. Then next part will be I will focus on scanners and other reading devices. Let's start with motion, voice and video input. So uh, many of uh, today's computers, mobile devices and game devices support motion, voice and video input. So with motion input, sometimes they call as gesture recognition where users can guide on screen elements using air gestures. So air gestures involve moving your body or handheld input device through the air. With motion input, a device containing a camera will detect your gesture and then uh, convert it into a digital signal that is sent to a computer, mobile or game device. So for those uh, students that might uh, always uh, play with Xbox Kinetic, they might be familiar with this kind of motion input. Now let's go to voice input. Voice input is the process of enter input by speaking into a microphone. The microphone uh, may be built in the computer or device, in a headset, or an external uh, device that uh, sits on top of a desk or other surface. Users of voice input normally will use voice recognition system. So this voice recognition also called speech recognition, where the computer or mobile devices have the capability to distinguish uh, spoken words and other vocal components. Some computers uh, and mobile devices make use of built-in and third-party voice recognition applications which have a natural language interface. So mobile devices such as iPhone, they will use Siri to speak simple task-based instruction to the device such as setting an alarm, enter a calendar appointment or making a call. As you can see in the example of figure 7. Right. Then we have very big audio of input. So audio input is the process of uh, enter any sound into the computer such as speech, music and uh, sound effects. So normally a sound engineer or music production will use a special software that we call as music production software where they will allow the user to record, compose, mix and edit music as well as sound. So these are the examples of how the sound engineer use the computer to mix the music. Then we have video input. So video input is the process of capture full motion images and store them on a computer or mobile devices storage medium such as hard drive or optical disk. A digital video will record video as digital signals which uh, you can transfer directly to a computer uh, or mobile device with appropriate connection. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm using a video input as well as the voice and audio input together. A webcam. It is a type of digital video camera that enables a user to capture video, still images, and, and then send email messages with video attachment. Sometimes, we can use webcam to broadcast live images or video over the internet, conduct video conferences, or make video calls. So now, I'm using the technology of a webcam to record my lecture. Just now, I'm talking about video conference. So what do you mean by a video conference? It is a meeting between two or more geographical separated people. So we have plenty of uh, apps that support video conference such as uh, Zoom, LiveSize, 
and we bet. Now let's move to scanners and reading devices. So a scanner is a light sensing input device that reads printed text and graphics and then translates the result into a form the computer can process. Only people will use a flatbed scanner where this kind of scanner will work in a manner similar to a copy machine except it puts a file of the document in a memory instead of a paper copy. So these are the steps on how people will use the scanner. So normally, you will place the document in the scanner and then the scanner will scan the face of the material that you want to scan and they will, the scanner will convert the document into the digital information and display them on your laptop on your, or, or on your screen. Then you have optical reader. An optical reader is a device that uses a light source to read characters, marks and codes and then converts them into digital data that computer can process. There are two technologies uh, used by optical readers which are optical character recognition and optical mark recognition. For OCR, this device includes a small optical scanner for reading characters and sophisticated software to analyze what it reads. However, for OMR, this device reads and draws marks such as small circles or rectangles. A barcode reader A barcode reader is an optical reader that uses laser beams to read a barcode. As you can see in figure 7, 11, 17, okay, a barcode is an identification code that often consists of either a set of vertical lines and uh, spaces of different widths or two dimensional patterns of dots, squares, and other images. So the barcode will represent data that identifies the manufacturer or maybe the product or the item. Then we have a QR code. What do we mean by QR code? QR code means quick response code. It is known as a 2D barcode because it stores information in both vertical and horizontal direction in a square shaped graphic that represents a web address or other content such as contact or maybe phone number. So as you can see in the figure 7 ET where the customer pay her bills by scanning an on-screen QR code. Let's move to RFID. Stand, it stands for Radio Frequency Identification. So it is a technology that uses a radio signals in order to communicate with a tech place in or attached to an object, an animal, or maybe a human being. So this RFID reader will read the information or the tech via radio waves. So what are the uses of this RFID reader or RFID device? So there are plenty of uses, some of them, for example, they can track in times of runners in a marathon, tracking location of people and other items, checking lift ticket of skiers, watching temperature and pressure of tires on a vehicle, checking out library books, managing purchases, Tracking payment as vehicle pass through goods on the system such as touch and go. Now let's move to the other part of the reading devices. So we have Manstrap readers. So a Manstrap reader reads the magnetic stripe on the back of cards such as credit cards, entertainment cards, bank cards, identification cards, and other similar cards. So this stripe at back of the cards will contain information that are identifying the user and some information stored in the stripe may include your name, account number, the card's information date or a country code. So these are the examples of uh, Max Stripe readers. I believe you are very familiar with this. to MICR. MICR stands for Magnetized Ink Character Recognition Devices that you can read text printed with magnetized ink. 
An MSCR reader convert MRC character into a form the computer can process. Normally, the banking industry will use MRCR for check processing. Each check in your checkbook has got pre-coded MRCR characters beginning at the lower left edge, as you can see in the figure 731. It's an example of a check. Then you have scanners, such as data collection device. So instead of reading or scanning data from a source document, a data collection device obtains data directly at the location where the transaction or event takes place. For example, employees as you can see in 722 use a barcode readers, handheld computers or other mobile device to collect data wirelessly. So that's all for the second part of input. So we will continue with the next part of uh, module 7 with output. So stay tuned. Bye.